Thank you so much. All right, I'm Jess. And I'm Alice. And we today are going to be making a caterpillar and butterfly painting slash creation. So this is gonna be a lot of fun today. Um, and here are some of the things you'll need to make our project today. Alice, what, what's, what are some of the things we're gonna need? Why don't you show everyone? Um, one of the first things you'll need is pipe cleaners or mm -hmm. thingamabobbers. <laughs> also called chenille stems sometimes. And if you don't have these, that's okay. Um, you could substitute construction paper or um, you know, some other paper uh, for this piece of the, of the project. And we'll show you that when we get there. What else are we gonna use today, Alice? You're also gonna need scissors. If you only have grown up scissors and you're, you might need help with an adult before you use them. That's right. Um, you're going to need glue. So we've got glue sticks, but any kind of regular glue would work just fine too. Um, uh, we'll need paint. So today we've got um, some Creatology acrylic paint. This is washable, uh, works great. This is a set with kind of some basic colors in it. So we'll show you how to mix them to get some of the colors we wanna make today. Um, you'll need paint brushes for your paint, construction paper, uh, and, and um, just kind of some plain white paper would be great. And then last but not least, the ever important, Googly eyes. Yes, yes, we love googly eyes. Googly eyes are so much fun. And you might want to place your plate of paint. That's a great, that's a great point. So we are going to be painting today. Um, even if you don't have paint, you can use crayons, colored markers, colored pencils. Those are all fine and will work too. But if you are going to use paint, I always recommend you cover your surface. So we've covered our surface with just some white paper here. And we're going to be really careful about where we're, we're putting our paint. So. Um, that's a great point. Thank you for reminding us, Alice. So today we're going to start by using um, the white piece of paper, okay? If you don't have just kind of, um, this is like a, a multi-purpose paper. Um, if you don't have uh, the multi-purpose paper, white construction paper or even white printer paper would do just fine. Notebook papers works, works fine too. So I'm going to kind of move some of the other stuff off of our surface so we have room to work on our project here. If you use like notebook paper, you may want to have um, something a little bit harder under it to like notebook paper and no sometimes regular paper can get really soggy. Or that's, and stuff. that's true, that's very true. I'm gonna give Alice a paintbrush and I'm gonna take a paintbrush. And Alice Ooh, will give you. Tiny so um, any size brushes will do for this. You've got a pretty big piece of paper um, and what we're going to be doing is painting the leaves all on the bottom of your paper. So you can make big leaves, you can make small leaves. You don't even um, have to make leaves. You don't even have to make leaves. Leaves. Alice was asking about um, whether she could make an underwater caterpillar. So I think that's maybe she's going to make some waves. If you have like a tiny shrimp and then say it's a caterpillar, maybe a caterpillar. Could be. That's a stretch, but it could be. So really quickly, just to repeat for those of you who may have just joined, we're making this fun caterpillar and butterfly painting slash pro project creation, 3D project today. Um, you'll need basic white paper, construction paper, um, googly eyes, glue, paint, chenille stems. I think that covers everything that you'll need here today, scissors. Um, but there will be, we'll, as we go through, we'll tell you if you don't have some of this stuff, other things you could use to get the same kind of effect with your project. So the first thing we're going to do today is, is make paint our leaves on uh, the paper. Mina, any questions as, as before we, we move to the next step? Yes, we have a couple of questions about sure. the first part. Um, is it okay if, if we use watercolors or markers instead of um, Absolutely. That's a great, I, I didn't even think about watercolors, silly me. So yes, we are using, we're going to be using acrylic paint today, but any kind of paint, watercolors, uh, colored markers, crayons, colored pencils, all of those will work uh, for this project. You just, while we're painting, you could be drawing, right? So you're just, you're just trying to cover your white paper with leaves um, and kind of get that nice green background. Okay. All right. So what happens if we don't have green paint? If you don't have green paint, you know what? Funny enough, we don't have green paint today. So one, um, I'm gonna show you a trick to make green paint. Mm -hmm. uh, but two, 
you can also use your imagination. All leaves are not green. They're in the fall. Think about the fall. In the fall, they're red and yellow. Sometimes they're kind of purple. I'm going to make a rainbow leaf. Alice is making rainbow leaves for her underwater caterpillar. So this is an opportunity. You, you can do the project just like we want to, but I also encourage you 100% use your imagination, use what you have, because um, with art, there is no wrong, right? So um, so we today, as, as we mentioned earlier, we actually don't have green paint. Hold on, Miss. Um, and what's really cool about this uh, Creatology paint, so we have six basic colors here, but we also have our primary colors. Um, and on the back of this, uh, this box, it tells you what primary colors you can mix or what colors you can mix to make other paint colors. Um, so even though we have a limited supply, we actually have a lot of opportunities to make some really cool colors. Um, so if you wanna make green and you don't have green paint, but you do have blue and yellow paint, what do yellow and blue make when you mix them together? Exactly. So I actually, when I made this uh, initial project earlier, I used these two paints to paint my leaves. Um, and we'll show you how to do that here really quickly. So, yeah, go ahead and pick your colors. And then there's the, um, if anyone has, so I'll, I'll shout out some popular other, uh, as I'm mixing my paints here, I'll shout out some other kind of popular um, paints you can, or colors you can make. Hold on, hold on, yep, just one second. Okay, so I've got my yellow out. Let me get Alice a napkin, <laughs> one second. There you go. Thank you. Um, and I'm gonna put my blue right next to it. And you can mix them together in the same space. What I'm gonna do is kind of keep them separate and mix them together in the middle. Um, Um, okay, so I've got, you see, I've got blue and yellow here in my, in my paint palette, and I'm just going to take my brush, and I'm going to scoop. What did you do? I'm just very, would you like me to help you? Yes, ma'am. Okay, sorry, I'm going to help Alice make her colors. So, Alice, what, what makes, what two colors make purple, if I were going to mix purple? If you want to make purple, you take blue and red together, and you would mix them together, and you would get purple. That's right. Blue and red make purple. purple. Exactly. And if I wanted to make pink, what colors would I use? Red and white. That's right. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna start making my green. I've got some yellow here and I'm just gonna take a scoop and I'm gonna kind of put it in the middle. I'm gonna actually take some generous scoops and kind of mix it in the middle. That's okay. And then I'm gonna take some scoops of my blue and I'm not worried about them getting mixed up together because um, I want them to get mixed up together. And then you can kind of see it starting to turn green, right? There it goes. And if I want it to be lighter or darker i can add, add different I, yeah absolutely you could add other colors to this um or i could add more blue if i wanted you know kind of a darker green or more yellow if i want kind of a brighter green absolutely yeah so as you're if you're ready go ahead and start painting leaves on your um paper and they can go anywhere you do want to leave just some white space so you can kind of see the um the shapes behind it um, at least that's how we did it. If you want to color your whole piece of paper, that's fine too. All right, so let's start making some leaves. I like to make leaves. Actually, before I, before I move on, any questions about colors or other, other things you might be able to use at this point in time? We do have a question from Riley. Um, so she has um, no, no, wait, no green. So okay. we're trying to mix it here but um, without a palette, what could you use instead of a palette? That's a great question. So there are actually a couple things. Um, paper plates, <laughs> even kind of wax paper can work really well. So anything that like you're not worried about paint sticking on, um, is, is anything disposable is, is always a really good option. Um, sometimes even a really thick paper can, can suffice. You just want to make sure you've got something underneath it just in case it does bleed through. Um, but any of those would any of those would work. Paper plates are another one I use a, a ton. So mm -hmm. perfect. Great. All right, and I'm going to get started on my leaves. So my brush is actually um, Alice kind of has a brush that's flat on top, 
but my brush, you can see, is actually kind of diagonal on top. So it's this kind of brush that makes it kind of easier to make leaves sometimes because you get a nice angle with it. But um, it really doesn't matter. You can uh, use any kind of brush to get to get the effect. So I'm going to start with a with a leaf over in my corner. I'm going to make this one a big one, I think. I'm just going to kind of make a almost like a, a half half moon almost. And then I'm going to come around on the other side and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Just like that. And since I've got, since we've got our surface covered underneath, I'm not super worried about getting paint off the edges. Um, but if you don't have a well, well covered surface, make sure you're staying on your paper so you're not painting on the table. You can't paint on the table unless your parents tell you to. <laughs> she speaks from experience, ladies and gentlemen. I've never painted on the table. <laughs> I've never painted on the table. And one thing I love about this, this kind of, um, Creatology paint is it's it's really neat to play with. Like you can actually get some neat lines just from the layers that you put as you're kind of you know building the layers on your paper. So there, I've got my first leaf ready to go, and I'm just going to keep moving around my paper um, and putting leaves here and there, different sizes, different shapes. All are welcome. Um, Alice, as you can see, is working on some really beautiful beautiful colored leaves. So that's great. What about trees and flowers for the background? Absolutely, I love that idea. Um, just you know, you're you we can't, we're, the effect this is going for is kind of that the animals are excuse me the insects are sitting on top of uh, your greenery or your plants. So just think about that a little bit, like where they're gonna where they might go on the page, and you want to make sure they have a nice big space so it doesn't look like they're just flying through the air or something. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And there's um, th these two, they're kind of smaller if you want some of those. So okay. is it normal and okay if your paper starts curling up? Yeah, you're, if, if, particularly if you're using watercolors, sometimes if you've got, if you're using a lot of water, it can, it can make your color, uh, or excuse me, make your paper kind of ripple a little bit. That's fine. As it dries, it'll dry out. Um, you may want to, um, once it's completely dry, you may just want to put like a book or something on top of it that'll help smooth it out a little bit, but that's totally fine. Um, and if you're using acrylic paint that's doing that, you may just have a really th a thinner paper or you may be using a whole lot of paint. So um, to help with that effect, uh, the next time try a thicker paper or just kind of use less paint in, in that one area. You want to try to avoid putting so much on that that you get holes in your paper is the one thing to watch out for. So if you if you run out of um, paint, you can always make more, right? Because you've got your colors here. And if anyone, I don't know every color combination, but if anyone has questions on a specific color combination, I would be happy to try to help. So. Well, you just have to use your brush to. You don't. We don't need more. Here, let me use my brush because I'm already green. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to keep making my leaves here. Perfect. How's everybody's doing? Are you making some really pretty scenes? I heard somebody's make working on flowers and trees. I love that idea. Is anyone else doing anything unique? We have someone adding branches. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I'll wait to see what else everyone's doing. In the meantime, um, someone's asking, do you know how to make brown? Yes. So um, interestingly, I have found that brown is actually best made just mixing a lot of co different colors together. You kind of end up with with brown. Um, you know, some mixing in certainly some some black um, is going to help get you that that darker base to your color. But um, you know, getting the right shade of brown may be more experimentation uh, a little bit. So we have some answers now. Um, we have lots and lots of flowers. Um, someone is adding a sun. Someone is using green glitter for the leaves. Um, fall leaves. We have a ladybug in the background. Mm. Different color leaves. I love it. And I love already, we've already got somebody using glitter. There's never enough glitter 
you, you can never go wrong with glitter on a project, so. <laughs> totally agree. Sadly, in my science class, I, there's only one person who really ever used glitter for projects. And Was it you? No. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm kind of making a... I'm making kind of a scoopy leaf. I'm playing with the shapes. It kind of actually looks like an octopus tentacle a little bit. We were underwater. I never have someone making orange marigold flowers. So pretty. Oh, that would be beautiful. Seeds in their leaves. And seeds, you said? I love that. We have something for our bugs to eat. Bugs. And raindrops. Actually, yeah. Raindrops. Is anybody oh, a leaf with holes in it. <laughs> the bugs have been eating. I see. <laughs> <laughs> They're hungry. <laughs> the hungry little caterpillar we, we could be making yeah. today. That's a great book. I used to love that book as a little baby. All right. So every, hopefully everyone's I being made, creative. If I need to start moving ahead for anyone, I can. I I'm, made some caterpillar eggs. Oh. We have a little bit of both. Um, some people okay. are still painting and some people are completely done. Excellent. So what I will do here, um, it's totally fine. Keep painting. I'm going to just talk a little bit about next steps. Um, so if, if you do have, if you are one of those people who's um, done, you can kind of start working on the next step. So what you are going to want to do is put your, find a, find a place to put your paper uh, so aside where it can dry, okay? You, you may want to make sure you're not going to bump it or um, it's not going to accidentally flip over and get paint on something where you don't want paint. So just be thoughtful about that. So put it aside and grab a piece of construction paper. So this piece of construction paper we're going to use next is actually going to form your caterpillar. So think about what color you want your caterpillar to be and find a piece of construction paper for me. And then I'm almost. Okay, I made do. some purple. I forgot about purple. Okay. I'm gonna do one kind of funky leaf, and then I'm gonna I have do um, someone else making mushroom or drawing, painting mushrooms, roses, rocks. Nice. I like it. I like everybody embellishing their artwork, and using that imagination. That's I awesome. I have no idea what I just did. I was like, that's okay. Should we tell, tell a butter project? Uh, that's a great idea. So why, while we've got some people picking out their caterpillar colors and why other people are still finishing up their leaves, Alice is going to tell us a butterfly joke. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What do you call, what, what does a chatty, what does a chatty caterpillar become? Everybody, if you think you know the answer, put it in the chat. What does a chatty caterpillar become? Still no answers, I'll let you know. Okay, that's all right. All right, so I've got all my leaves done. I've kind of played with the different shapes. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside for a little bit, find a nice safe place, make sure I don't have any paint on the bottom there so I'm not getting anything else dirty. And I'm gonna set this aside just for a few minutes to let that dry, okay? We have we have a couple of answers now. Oh, okay. A caterpillar, chatty butterfly, chatty bug, um, a lot of chatty butterflies, chattering butterfly, chatty pillar, chatterfly, chatty. It's super close, but nobody's gotten it. What's the answer, Alice? A social butterfly. Oh, that's so funny. Look at it. Social means like internet, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. It does. It, it absolutely does. Those are social media platforms. But social also means that you're very friendly and you like hanging out with people. So, um, and you like talking to other people. So that's why. That's what a social butterfly is. Okay. I'm going to pick out my caterpillar color. Let's see. I think I will do a blue, light blue caterpillar this time. Okay, so I'm going to get my scissors. Again, kids um, prefer, definitely prefer you're using kid safe uh, kind of blunt tip or kid safe scissors. Always better to use. Um, but uh, only, adults, feel free to use adult size. If you only have grown up scissors and you're under 18, 
Well, if you're under like 16 or something, please go get a parent for help. If you have a parent at home and if you don't, just look for Just be careful. Be careful. Or be careful. <laughs> Cut carefully. Um, so you don't need a ruler to do this. I'm just using this to kind of illustrate um, what what uh, helped me when I did this. So you've got your piece of construction paper. Um, I got a ruler out and basically I kind of looked at, you know, how big that ruler was um, and made my cut. So that's where I started. Um, that gave me, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna turn this construction paper, we're gonna make a bunch of little rolls. And so you can kind of see, see here from the top, I have a bunch of uh, different pieces of construction paper. But if you see from the side, I'll try to get a good angle there for you. They're little rolls of construction paper, okay? So I actually, my, my caterpillar was one, two, three, four, five, six rolls long. Um, yours could be bigger, it could be shorter. So just plan accordingly for how many rolls you want your caterpillar, caterpillar to be. Can I put words on here? Yeah, you can do whatever. Um, so I'm gonna cut out probably two, um, two lengths of, of um, paper here to form my rolls, you, depending on how big you make your rolls, because you can make them really tight, uh, kind of like for, for the butterfly, we made really small ones. Um, but for my caterpillar, I made bigger, chunkier ones. So it's up to you how big or small you want them to be. Um, when I made these six, it took me about one, one and a half strips to get all three of these strips or all three of these um, rolls for my caterpillar. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my first strip and the line doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get, you know, kind of a, as straight as you can get. And if you wanna be super straight and use your ruler to mark your paper, that's fine too. So I'm just gonna make two, two strips. So we have a question here, if we don't have any colored paper, construction paper, can we draw the butterfly and the caterpillar on? Absolutely. So I can think of um, one, you can absolutely draw um, on top of anything you're doing. So that's a great idea. Excuse me. The other thing I could think of doing is if you had another piece of paper and you wanted to kind of, you know, color in a section and then cut that section out and form your roll. So you've got some kind of color variation. You could absolutely do it that way too. Um, and that would allow you to have the kind of 3D effect if you wanted to try that. Okay, so um, basically you're gonna, we're, to get the roll, you're going to take the paper and we're gonna put, I'll show you again, this again in a second, but we're gonna put some glue right here on the edge and then you're gonna roll that under like this, okay? And then we're gonna cut our loop, okay? I found it easier to, to do it like this, but another way you could do it, okay, Alice has some paint on herself, so she is going to go. We're gonna stop for a second and de-blue Alice. She tried to become a Smurf, but that did not work. Um, let's put it over, over on top of those books, how about? Can I take both the pieces? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, very careful because you got all right. Um, Before we continue, um, could you show us how to cut the construction paper again? Absolutely. So um, using take, taking your construction paper, um, if you want, you can use a ruler. You absolutely do not have to, um, but you can use a ruler and you want to make maybe use about a, a ruler's width of the paper is what you're trying to get to. It doesn't have to be exact, um, but all you're going to do is um, take that take that big piece of paper. I'm guesstimating my ruler's width here a little bit, and you're just going to cut one long strip. Okay. How long would you recommend these strips to be? Let's see. This strip is almost exactly 12 inches. Okay. But we're going to cut it up into smaller strips to actually form the roll that we're going to be making. So um, from here, we're going to. Um, you can either do it one at a time as, and then cut, or you can cut a length and then do your roll. So I'll, I'll do the cut the length just because I think it'll be easier for everybody to see, but you can do it either way. So I'm gonna cut a length that's about three inches um, to get a nice big chunky butterfly. Again, if you want, so just to, so everyone can see what that looks like when I 
when I'm going to put my glue on and, and tighten it, it's going to be kind of that big chunky, um, chunky circle. Okay. If you want a smaller circle, just use a smaller um, length of paper and, and a tighter roll. Can you do mine? Sure. So um, Alice is using pink for hers. I'm going to cut her about a three inch piece of paper to get a nice big chunk. And then you can use your first uh, one that you make to kind of get the next couple, right? Um, so there's one, two, and she's just going to have a little extra, so I'll trim that off. So that this will give her enough. Uh, one strip is giving her enough for three big chunky rolls. And um, so here you're going to need some glue. Before you move forward, we have a couple of questions about the paint. I think a couple of people are still on there. Okay. Just, uh, what size paintbrush would you recommend for the leaves? And also, how would you make black? Okay, so um, I black. What I would do is well, well. First of all, you would want to make gray, which is white. Well, no, you need black to make gray. <laughs> So that's, a, I, I will be honest, that one has me a little stumped. I think you could probably get to a really um, a, a dark color if you had maybe, some brown and blue. Maybe. Um, but I don't know if it would be all black. Purple, if you get it, like mix it a lot of times, like over mm -hmm. and over, you get a purple color. But I got this. Yeah, I always kind of got a deep, a deep purple. Um, on hers, you can see, and it almost, I think, looks almost black on the camera, but it's really dark, deep purple here. So, yeah, you could have gone even deeper. And what colors did you use to make the purple? Blue and red, mm -hmm. and I just scooped some, like, little bits of it, and then I did that probably twice to make okay. this darker purple. Yeah. Um, and from a paintbrush perspective, you can really use any kind of paintbrush. We actually are working with, um, <laughs> Alice ex explored our paintbrush space. You can see she's got about eight brushes she's been working with here to get um, you know, uh, different types and, and sizes of leaves. The bigger the paintbrush, obviously, the bigger your leaf is gonna be, okay? So if, you have, if you're working on a really big piece of paper, um, then maybe you wanna use a bigger brush. And if you're using on, working on a smaller paper or you wanna make kind of fine details on your leaves or, um, or your flower petals, then maybe you wanna use a smaller brush. But it's entirely up to you. It's really not going to make a, a huge difference one way or another. Yes. So I'm going to cut Alice's next rolls again, just kind of guesstimate. Yep. I will show you in just a second. Okay. Oh, I got four out of this one. I just want to cut it this big. Okay. So okay. So to do your roll, we've got our we've got our uh, piece of paper again. We're making. I'm making a, a chunkier caterpillar. So I'm using a glue stick, but any type of glue will do. And if you don't have glue, tape would work just fine as well, okay? Um, so we're just gonna take the, I'm gonna take my glue stick and just put a little bit on the very edge of my roll. And I'm gonna take that sticky side and I'm gonna roll it underneath, okay? Roll it underneath and I'm gonna roll it to the other edge and then I'm gonna hold it tight and kind of squeeze the glued, glued edge to the, to the edge without any glue. Alice is knocking them out over here. She's doing great. All right, so now I have my nice chunky roll, okay? And you're gonna make as many as you want of those. Um, for the example, I made six, so I think I'm gonna make about the same this time. If you want them to stay together kind of, I, what I've been doing is I've been using a little bit more glue and not putting it straight on the edge. I've been kind of putting it not, not a little bit on the edge, more of a lot on the edge mm -hmm. kind of to make a um, bigger, like, like stronger type kind of, so I don't really have to hold it. I can just hold it for a couple of seconds and then it's really already. Yeah. I think that's great. The other kind of cool thing you could do uh, using the same technique is make like a, a, a construction paper necklace or construction paper jewelry or something like that. Because we're essentially making big beads if you think about it. So um, almost like big pieces of pasta. Could we use um, hot glue for this? 
You can, but I recommend um, anyone using a hot glue gun, make sure that the parent, parent or an that. adult is either helping you or actually doing the gluing because I speak from experience when I say that uh, when Getting hot was, glue on your fingers is not a fun experience. Yeah, when she <laughs> was um, gluing one of my science projects things, because kind of would work with hot glue, she kind of just well, actually the GT, and she got on her fingers. She's like, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> she's like, it hurts. It she hurts. Went to go get made my dad go get her an ice pack. Uh, right. What about um, double sided tape? Would that work? Absolutely, yes. that will, absolutely, and that will work, that should work wonderfully. So I've used um, double sided tape before, and it was like once, and I didn't really even get to use it all. I didn't <laughs> see it, and also I did actually use double sided tape before, but like it works kind of. But like from my part of the project that I was using double sided tape on, it kind of fell off because it was on foam. But paper should work. Yep. Okay, I've almost got my sixth and final. Uh, I don't know how many caterpillar roll to put together. Well, Again, yes. you can do you can do as many or as few as you want. We need a suggestion and we also have a question. Okay. So what happens if um, someone's making the rolls and they're just not um, sticking together? Sticking. Along, what can you do? Yeah. So um, it's interesting. You know that that's a great question actually because um, uh, so a couple of things. If they're these big, if you're if you've got a chunky roll and you're doing the chunky rolls like we are, I would just say um, maybe apply a little bit more glue, and and um, just hold it for a little bit longer. Okay, just kind of squeeze it tight. If you're doing a smaller roll, and this is something I um, a trick I figured out when I was working on my butterfly, which has you see these are nice big chunky ones, but these are super tiny, and my fingers were too tiny to like fit inside the roll and outside the roll so I couldn't squeeze it together. What mom did, yeah. but she took one of these paintbrushes, she just wraps them around. Yeah, so I had my I had my glue on it and I wrapped it around and it gave me, it, it enabled me to like have something to squeeze it um, and help it stay closed without scr scrunching my, my roll. Um, so that might help too. You just, you, you need something to really be able to squeeze it a little bit together. So if you have a pencil or the end of your paintbrush might work too, um, a pen, even if for the bigger chunkier rolls, if you wanted to try using and you're using a glue stick and you wanted to try using the outside of your glue stick to be something that you can kind of squeeze down on, that could help. Tip, if you wanted to make a really, really chunky roll, this, there is actually two ideas that I just came out with. Up with you could wrap one around here, take it off, and then push it up a little. Mm -hmm. Or if you have like a jar or something, it like it doesn't have to be this big, you can wrap it around and make it. And also, if you're having trouble, like you can also just go find, um, like if you have a normal acrylic paint, or you can, if you don't have paintbrush and you're using mm -hmm. like your hands, if you want to, finger painting, you can, um, Use a, uh, what do you call it? A pencil. Pencil, yes. Okay, so if once you've got all your rolls together, how, however many you want to use, we're actually gonna start to glue our rolls together. So you're gonna make a kind of a line, okay, with your, with your uh, caterpillar. Um, so take your first roll, and I like to use this, the edge where I, I brought them together. So I've got my seam, right? And I'm gonna put some more glue on that seam. And I it's I, I like just to kind of sticking my finger in the middle because it gives me something to push down on yeah. without without squishing the roll. And then I'm gonna take the next roll and I'm gonna find its seam and I'm gonna press the two together. Just like you that. Kind of squeeze have to them together. Hold this one mm -hmm. Because they're both like, I've never met you before, so I wanna I <laughs> not sure if they're gonna be friends yet. So it's <laughs> What happens, or how would you, uh, how would you um, make a caterpillar with more than one color? Oh, that's a great question. I love that question. So, um, if I was going to do that, I was going to steal one of your rolls for just a second. I might, I would, I would cut two different colors of paper, or as many different colors of paper as I wanted, um, the strips, and I would just um, form, put those together, right? So you could make a pattern. I love that idea. 
Um, I was going to make a rainbow one, but then I'm like, wait, I don't have pink here, so I'm going to make a pink caterpillar. There you go. Have. Okay. So absolutely, you could just take those different, you know, make your make your rolls out of uh, different pieces of construction paper, and that way you can have a really colorful caterpillar. That would be beautiful. Um, so we're just going to take keep keep um, finding the the next side, okay. and taking that next roll and stick it to the next roll. So we're just building our rolls here one at a time. I'm just going to sit and squeeze it together. I have seven. So it sticks. Okay, got that. Mine, mine is a very fat caterpillar this time. It's you can also lot. make more than one caterpillar. Mm -hmm. You can make a baby cat. You make a baby caterpillar, and you can make a good caterpillar. If you wanted to make a baby caterpillar, it would just be the same as the butterfly, and we will show you how to do the butterfly in a second. Also, okay. after I retake my, I'm up to four rolls now. Squeeze them together. Four rolls. Gemma used pom poms on her caterpillar. <gasps> I love it. Yeah, you could totally decorate these. You know, another something else um, for next time you might want to try is before you um, cut up your rolls, you could even like take crayons or markers and make designs on your paper so that when you cut it up, you have like neat designs on your caterpillar that you made. You could add glitter. Look, you can make I know it someone like, out there has glitter. Look, you can make it like one of those rings. That... <laughs> Thank you. Alice. All right, I'm on my last caterpillar roll. So Jess, um, we have a lot of requests um, for you to show us how to make the rolls again. So as soon as you're done with that, could you go over the, the measurements for the, the for the rolls? Absolutely. And, Thank you. All right. So you see, I've got, for those of you uh, that are at this stage, I've got all my rolls put together. Um, I'm just gonna set this down for a moment, okay? I'll come back and I'll help you out. Okay, so those are those of you who are still working on rolls, you're gonna get your piece of construction paper. Um, you can use a ruler, but you don't have to. I just found it was like a nice kind of guide, okay? Um, so maybe like a ruler's width um, of a strip on your construction paper, so all right? Like 12 so 12 inches or... Well, 12 okay. inches long, okay? You're gonna basically use the whole piece of construction paper going long ways. And um, and then maybe like an inch and a half, uh, inch to an inch and a half um, strip. So you're gonna go all the way up the, you're gonna have 12 inches long, maybe an inch to an inch and a half wide, okay? Um, to get these big chunks, I cut these and do approximately two and a half to three inch inch pieces. So once I cut my strip, and I'll just cut a, a practice strip here so everybody can see. I huh? finished. Me I, I go down about. I'm and I'm doing it roughly right. So about let's say three inches, mm -hmm. two and a half three inches. And then I'm just going to use that same piece to kind of cut the rest of my uh, ones. So I'm going to get, for this one, I'm going to get about three rolls. I'll have a little extra. I'm just going to put that aside. Three rolls from that one strip, okay? So I'll have three, three rolls from that one strip. Once you've got your, your smaller strips, um, you're going to take your glue and put it on one edge, just like that, or your tape, if you've got tape. And then you're gonna take the sticky side, should be on top, and you're gonna roll it underneath, just like that, and hold, and then hold it together so it sticks, okay? What My recommendations um, would you give so that the, the roll doesn't bend, or the paper doesn't, you know, fold? Yeah, so so um, that's where if you're having trouble with like your your paper getting scrunched, your they, they remind me of noodles. So <laughs> your noodle getting your roll or your noodle getting scrunched, that's where if you're having that trouble and and your fingers aren't big enough um, or you can't get your fingers in to do the squeezing and kind of hold the structure of the of the roll, that's where using even something like um, I'll use this as an example. If you've got a big chunky one, um, you know, even using your glue stick to roll it around and give you that stability so it stays nice and round. 
and then you can just slide it off. Or if you've got, if you're working with smaller size and you're making tighter rolls, using something like a pencil or even the end of your paintbrush to help you roll and give you that stability so it's nice and it stays nice and tight, but you're not scrunching your roll. Okay, does that make sense? Perfect. And would super glue be something that we could use for this? So um, yes, you can use super glue. That might be a, a little bit um, you know, strong. In, strong for this particular project, but it will certainly work. I would definitely recommend if you're using super glue only to let adults use super glue, because that can be, if you get it in the wrong places, it can be very tough to get off and um, we don't want anyone get, getting hurt. So I would highly recommend that if you do only have super glue, that you let your parents or caregivers um, or an adult do the gluing for you, okay? And you wanna make sure it's completely dry before you go back and touch it because you don't wanna get any of that glue on your skin and accidentally glue your fingers together because that's it's not fun to get them apart. <laughs> okay, so uh, keep working on your rolls. Um, for those of you who are done with your caterpillar rolls um, and you have them all, all your rolls done and then you kind of glued them together, we're gonna put our antenna and our eyeballs on our... Um, so pick out, uh, get, get your two googly eyes or one if you have a one-eyed caterpillar. And Alice is pick and get your chenille stem if you're using the chenille stem or pipe cleaner, whatever you want to thing them of auburs as Alice calls them. Or paper. Um, yeah, if you don't have uh, chenille stems or pipe cleaners, that's fine. Uh, construction paper can work just as well. You can take a piece of paper and kind of make a teeny tiny roll, or you could even just um, make a little strip and glue it on uh, in, in place of an antenna. So a lot of other things you could use to make an antenna if you don't have the pipe cleaner. If you do have the pipe cleaner, what you're gonna do is um, take, uh, so there is a wire that runs through these. They can be a little tricky to, to cut. So you may wanna have an adult help you if, if you're struggling with, with getting your scissors to cut through. But you take about maybe about an inch uh, section yeah, absolutely. And you're just gonna cut yourself two tiny antennas, okay? Mine are gonna be about an inch long. There we go. Also, what I do, would do is just take your finger and bend them, and then mm -hmm. like right where the bend is. That helps bend. you know where to cut, yeah. Where to cut it. And I'm actually gonna, so I'm gonna take my, I have my two one inch strips here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take one and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have an antenna that kind of droop or kind of droopy antennas. So I'm going to take the top of my pipe cleaner and I'm just going to make like a candy cane shape with it, just like that. Okay. So I've got one and I'm going to, that'll be that side. And I'm going to go the other way for the other side. My two yeah. antenna. I'm going to wait. Perfect. Just like that. Okay. What? Um, I don't know how to do this. Oh, wait, yeah. yeah. This, so this part, Chenille stems and uh, glue them. do not love one another. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, get enough. So what I have found uh, for this is actually ew, um, using the using the glue. I'll put a little bit on the very end. Excuse me, not a little bit. I put a lot on <laughs> because it chenille stems all that um, that material likes to soak up the glue. So I'll put a bunch on. And then just in between my first and second roll, I'm just gonna kind of squeeze it down in there. You don't even and then need hold glue. it tight. Yeah, you may not even need glue, that's true. I'm just gonna kind of hold it tight, okay? For a minute while that glue starts to adhere to the paper. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. If you don't use glue, I it would fall out if you don't have it like really good in there. And also, if you want this, it would kind of ruin your caterpillar a little bit. But if you have double-sided tape, you may want to tape the bottom of the chenille stems, like take um, the first part of the head off and tape the chenille stems, and the other side can tape your... Yep, yeah, that, that could work too. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of tightly... Um, so now I've got them in there. I just nestled them down in, and I just squeezed that first one and second one together again nice and tight. Yeah, yeah. Alice is going to show you how to do the eyeballs. Okay, I'll just you do this one. Okay. So if you're ready for the eyeballs, um, 
We will first, you want to find your eyeballs. And if you don't have eyeballs, you can draw them on there with a marker or a um, pencil, color pencil, crayons. I would, if you, if you are very careful, you can use a Sharpie, but I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so what you do, you have your grease stick, you open up the cap, and you'll take your little eyeball, and you'll just spread the bottom around, kind of. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I'm just gonna put some... And then you, what I will do is I would, like, turn around my little guy and try to put my thing, finger through. And then I just stick it on there. Hold it tight. Oh, you want to make sure it's up top, so um, else you're <laughs> make sure it's up top. You get your finger. Uh, ah. Okay. And then once you have your first eye stick, you can do that again. You make sure your first stick cast is off, or else the glue will not come. You take the eyeball, turn it on the other side where it's just white, you can't see the eye. And you'll just spread it Ooh. around. <laughs> you got plenty there, so you're gonna... Yep. Good. And then make sure you put it up top. Because we put it, if you put it at the bottom, the caterpillar is looking at the ground. Perfect. And so now, Alice, show them. So I've got my caterpillar with his eyes and his antennas. And Alice, show them yours. I have my little buddy. There you go. So we've got our caterpillars all ready to go. All right, so we're gonna put our caterpillar to the side, okay? Put it off to the side. And the next thing we're gonna work on is, start working on is our butterfly. But before we move on, does anyone have any final questions about finishing your caterpillar? Okay, we're gonna keep going. Um, the for those of you, I see, I do see a question in your chat in the chat. If you have, um, uh, if you're cu still cutting your paper, it's about twelve inches long each strip, and about an inch to an inch and a half would be probably really big, but an inch uh, an inch wide. And generally speaking, when you cut down to the rolls, think about a two and a half to a three inch. Um, strip from here that you're going to cut. And you can get about three of those out of your 12 inch strip. Okay. If you want to also, and you don't have a ruler, you can, well, if you were like doing this in your kitchen, you don't actually get it over here with some wet hands or something, mm -hmm. but you could try, put a piece of paper here and then kind of know this is about 12 inches. Yeah. Or, something. or I'm going to put that down here for a second. You can do both of your hands just yeah, that. that could work too. Um, and I, uh, if you don't have googly eyes, uh, some great suggestions here. So you could just draw them on, use a, a, a pencil or a marker and just draw on some googly eyes. Or you could use, and I saw this in the chat, somebody else you recommended using a, like a different color construction paper to make eyes. That would absolutely work too. And that could actually work for your antenna as well. So um, all kinds of ways you could make your, your fun caterpillar. So I'm going to put mine up here for a moment. We're going to put that aside. What's Next, we're going to... Oh. Um, I'm going to name oh, Jerry's antenna. Jerry's antenna. Okay, yours is Jerry? Yep, mine's Jerry the caterpillar. Mine will be... No, no, mine's full. No. Mine's... No, I'm going to call on Mario. Mario, because our cat's name is Mario. She's kind of fat and then caterpillars get really fat and then so mario is the caterpillar <laughs> okay i love it um mine's gonna be rolly because it's made of big rolls okay next we're gonna start working on our butterflies okay and i'm gonna check the chat here sorry just give me one second i'm gonna make sure um, yes, you can use wet glue, absolutely. So it, it just may take a little bit longer to dry, but that will work just fine. And if you don't have glue, tape also works, okay? What can you so, use instead of pipe cleaners? Um, instead of pipe cleaners, uh, construction paper will work just fine. You can just cut smaller strips and kind of stick them in where you, where you would have the antenna. So they stick straight someone up. Someone also asked, can you go for a little? And someone also asked, how do you remake the antenna? 
Okay, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move us forward, and then I will come back to making the or I'll I'll do the antennas really quickly, and then I'm gonna move us forward to the butterfly. Thank you, but we can't talk at the same time, so I'm just gonna do it fast. Okay, so you get if you do have the pipe cleaner, um, you're gonna cut about two two inch strips, just like that, or excuse me, two one inch strips is what I meant to say, and rough at, roughly estimating their size. Um, you can you do them just like that. I like to bend mine over like a candy cane. So I gave mine a little kind of droopy look, but you can do whatever. You're gonna put a lot of glue down at the bottom and then you're gonna stick it in between the first and second roll of your caterpillar roll. Um, so, and then just kind of squeeze it together to keep it, keep the glue tight and you'll go from there, okay? All right, I'm gonna move us on to our next uh, to our next step, making the caterpillar, or excuse me, making the butterfly. Okay, so I don't know. Yes, you can put on glitter. Whoever put that in chat, the answer is always yes to glitter. Okay. Glitter is the thing <laughs> we need in the world. So uh, to make the butterfly, this is gonna be really easy. And I'll show you a trick if you don't know this trick, how to make hearts out of a uh, construction paper. Um, this is great. So help you at Valentine's Day when you're making Valentine's cards. So you're gonna take, you wanna pick out two colors of construction paper, okay? Um, why don't I talk them through it and then you show them, okay? okay. So we've got two colors. You're gonna use one color to make the big, um, the big, what are pedals? What am I? Wings. Wings. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll show you what that looks like on the actual finished project. So you've got one, one outside, the outside wings are going to be big. And then you're going to use your second color to make the inside part of the wings. Okay. So our wings are going to have two layers. So pick out your two colors and whichever color you want to be the big wing, the big part of the wing, right? The bottom part. Um, you're going to take your construction paper and you're gonna fold it in half. And I think I'm gonna actually use my dark blue to be the bottom of my wing. And you can use any color. This will work with any color, okay? You would like Whatever to works use for you. A hot dog fold, if you like hot dog kind of paper. Yeah, that's true. And the paper like this. It's okay. Paper and paint. Paper and paint. Actually, you're supposed to put it. I'm just gonna move your paint out, okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, so you're gonna take your your base wing and you're just gonna fold it in half, okay? Like a hot dog. Like, or like you're making a card, okay? And you're gonna crease it. Horrible. Then we are gonna cut like a. Yeah, well, we'll let you show them in just a second. We're gonna cut it two shapes out of this, okay? Because we're gonna make a wing for each side. So you're gonna go take your scissors. I have fluff on them for some reason. And you're gonna kind of make a shape. Actually, I'll draw it so everybody can see it. Let me get a pen. pen. Um, you're gonna kind of make a, a half of a heart shape, okay? And I'll, I'm just drawing it so you can kind of imagine it on your paper. And my heart is, um, I'm gonna make two. They don't have to be perfect and, all, and perfectly the same. You just wanna get them kind of the same, okay? And the good news is with these things, you can always fix it while you're cutting and kind of adjust. All right, so does everybody see how, well, that's kind of hard to see, unfortunately. But um, let's see if I can get it closer. There we go. So I kind of made um, this hook shape, right, with my, <laughs> with my pen. And I'm just gonna make that on one side of the paper. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut out that shape. And I'm gonna cut through both sides of my paper. I actually have a so whatever question. I'm cutting on this side will be mirrored on the other side. I have a question. The, do the wings have to be kind of heart shaped? Uh, they do not. I guess you could you could do any kind of any kind of shape would work just fine. Okay, we just want to check our chat here. So I'm just sorry. I got kicked out of the meeting. Um, I'm back. I think I missed a couple of questions. However, I do want to remind everyone that um, if you miss missed a step or want to watch this video again, you can. Um, it will be available within 24 to 48 hours. I will put the links in the chat for you so you can go to that. Great. And I know we're running tight on time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of speed us ahead a little bit. But see, I've got one, I, I cut out my one shape 
and I got one heart when I unfolded it. So when what that looks like when you unfold your paper is you have a, essentially you've got a heart in your paper, okay? I'm gonna make two of those shapes. Also kind of, I had a little bit of a wonky heart and I made this shape. I didn't do it as my, as my mom did. I normally just did it one side, folded it, and then now you got two. Yep. There, I didn't no, do it twice. Long, I did. Okay, so I've got my two hearts. Okay, one heart, two heart. Again, I just cut these kind of hooks in. Uh, I took a I took a flat piece of paper. I folded it in half. I cut kind of two hook shapes out of it, which gave me when I unfolded it, unfolded them, gave me these heart, heart shapes. Okay, so that's kind of what they look like when they're. Oops, see if I can do this. Ah, there we go. Okay. So that makes a nice heart. And what we're gonna do with those actually is you're gonna take them together and you're gonna kind of overlap them. My butterfly is a little lopsided, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna stick it on the bottom of one of my hearts. I'm gonna take my other heart and, and overlap them just like that. So I now have two wings, okay? My wings kind of go like this. Like my wings fit in my second part already, mm -hmm. but my wings don't really fit all the way, but it actually kind of makes like a cool a little sense. neck thing. That's very cool. So, all right, kind of because we're tight in time, I'm gonna keep us moving forward, okay, everyone? So you make that, you make your big set of wings, making two kinds of hearts, and then you're gonna take your next piece of paper where you're gonna make your smaller wings. You're gonna do the exact same thing. You're just gonna make hooks that are, are slightly smaller than the other ones, okay? Exact same thing. You're just gonna cut out those hook shapes. I left my room to have space time so I can just like laugh around like falling the <laughs> My butterfly got a little pink on it. I would name it Splash. There you go. Okay, so I've got my next two heart shapes. Okay, and these are a little smaller, should be a little smaller. They are not, so I'm gonna make, I'm gonna cut mine again. Made them too big. So I'm just gonna keep cutting. Kind of cut out the edge. If you're interested, that's what that looks like. You can make a heart that way too. So I got a, my smaller wing, and I'm just gonna paste it on top of my bigger wing, okay? So on the bottom of this heart, I'm gonna put some glue. Just like that. What I'm kind of doing, you guys don't have to do this. I took one of my brushes, it's a little bit wet, but not too wet. And I made some dots. Pretty, I like that, some blue designs. Dots. All right, I'm gonna take the bottom of my other purple heart, small wing heart, and I'm gonna put it on the other side. Oh, a very lopsided butterfly. <laughs> Don't worry, mine didn't okay. even really. That's okay. All right. And then um, I'm actually going to go back to and, and pick up my, my painted piece of paper. And I think this next part's a little easier if we if we um, actually go ahead and glue down our butterfly and our I'm going to rename uh, caterpillar. caterpillar. So make sure your paper is dry. Um, you know, be careful if it's still a little wet in spots. But I'm actually going to take my caterpillar and shape and I'm going to turn it all the way over, put some glue on the bottom, and I'm going to glue it to my painted, my paper with the painted leaves. And make sure you're leaving wherever you put it down, make sure you're leaving enough room for your, your caterpillar too, okay? So I'm going to put mine right here. That's good. And if you want to, you can go ahead and put your caterpillar on too. So just carefully go back, pick up your caterpillar and carefully kind of put glue on the bottom of those rolls. You could also just put glue on the paper and try to stick it down. You can, since mine doesn't have glue in the antenna, they're gonna take the antenna out. Otherwise it can be safer. And so I don't scrunch my rolls, I'm actually putting my fingers through the holes at the of the caterpillar rolls, okay? So, okay, so I've got him put down and I've got the, the bottom of my butterfly. And next what I'm gonna do is, um, let's see, I'll use light blue again. Um, I'm gonna take one of my strips 
This time, instead of cutting three inch pieces, I'm gonna cut much smaller pieces. So maybe like an inch and a half to two inches because I wanna make a tighter roll. Can you do these Yeah, um, let me show everybody how to do them and then I'll cut some up for you so you can do it. So I'm, gonna keep this. I'm, I'm just not gonna have one. So it's the same thing we did last time, okay? You're just using smaller pieces of paper. And remember, um, this is where it might get hard to, um, you know, have your finger in there because it's, it's a smaller piece of paper. You can try it, absolutely. But if you run into trouble using the end of a, a, a pencil or even your paintbrush to kind of try to get a really tight, nice tight roll, like this is probably even too big. I'm going to make it tighter. Um, can really help because it can be hard to, to make them stick. My caterpillar, you can loop its body so it can be like, Oof. Blue. Yeah. So you can move around its body around the back because that will stick so much. And I'm just like, gonna make a tight, nice little roll. So these are these are not the big chunky ones we did for the caterpillar. These are little ones we did for the the sure you can use that one. Um for the purposes of this, because we are running out of time, I'm just gonna make one long one to go uh horizontally across the center of my butterfly. But you could also use uh if we had a little bit more time or you have a little bit more time. You can use um, create multiple rolls and kind of do the same effect that you had for your caterpillar and repeat that for the body of your butterfly. But for time, I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna make two so I have room to put my um, uh, eyeballs on. And to do that, to just only make two, I'm actually gonna roll mine instead of rolling it the, the on the short side. I'm gonna roll it on the long side this time. Um, so I'll have a longer body for my butterfly. Just like this. And this is a very sticky process. So, <laughs> um, how big would you would you say the rolls need to be? Um, or just making all the rolls. Sure. So, um, for the butterfly rolls, for the butterfly body, I'm using uh, strips that are probably about um, two inches long instead of the three inches that we used for our um for our other one okay for our caterpillar the caterpillar with had kind of a chunkier body so um i used longer strips for my caterpillar okay so i'm going to put my first roll down and again i'm doing like a whole body roll here i'm gonna use my little paintbrush trick to try to get that to go down without flattening it too much you see how I'm just using the paintbrush to give me some stability to try to get that glue down. Don't mind about my there we go. So I'm going to do one more of those long ones. Um, so I have a place to put both of my googly eyes. Three, just glue this yeah, That's probably too long. The caterpillar's not staying, so I'm just gluing it down. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, use more glue. That's okay. I'm actually going to use our cheek here. That worked really well for me. So I'm going to use the edge of my paintbrush to kind of give me some stability. Put that roll down. Perfect. It's very sticky, so this is this is tough. Oh, that's just not working for me. That's okay. My fingers are starting to stick together. I've I've used so much. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna. I've got enough of a, a shell here. I think my fingers are actually causing a problem. Too much glue on my fingers. Dude, it's like if you just rub your hands yeah. together. All right, I'm gonna glue down my final heat one here, and then so everybody can see. Okay, I've got my two rolls here. Good. All right, I got sticky fingers, so I'm gonna get that glue off my sticky fingers, rub them together. All right, and I'm gonna find my two uh, googly eyes that I've got sitting over here for my butterfly. And I'm gonna put, uh, just like we did for the caterpillar, you're just gonna put a little glue on the end of the, uh, or on the bottom of your googly eye. And you're gonna put your googly eye on your butterfly roll. I'm gonna like, 
I can't really put it on my mouth. I'm gonna put I'll it. make I'll make another. Or you, yeah, you could do it up, up top, above it, where it was. Squish down the ruler a little bit. I know it's like kind of breaking the rules, but the ruler has to be squished. There are no rules in art, sweetie. That's the beautiful part of it. Yes. Yeah, my butterfly's having some critical critical okay. issues today. <laughs> All right, I've got my antenna from earlier. Again, same thing you did with the caterpillar. You're just gonna cut that one inch piece. Really get a lot of glue on the bottom. And um, just put it kind of up top above your rolls on your butterfly. Ooh, just dropped it. My butterfly dies. So I'm going to get <laughs> real sticking until so like, I'm like, ah, please stick. That's okay. Before this happened, I made a little All right. antenna. Okay. My, my butterfly body has seen better days, but that's okay. All right, and there we go. We've got our butterfly and our caterpillar on our beautiful lush green space. So I had a wonderful time with everyone today. I know we're a little over time. Thank you for sticking around with us. Uh, if you have any questions or need to watch again, check out uh, the video at michaels.com backslash classes. It'll be live uh, around this time tomorrow. So. We had a great time today. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Alice.